Alright, yo yo! This is the very first live sessions under the Malaysia Very First uh, Virtual Property Expo 2017 brought to you exclusively by the groundbreaking TheAgePropertyDot.com Alright, so if you are following it right now, you are tuning right now, taking live, we are now online, so welcome online and I want you to remember to hashtag this handle so the handle is VPS2017 get your friend, uh, your family and your follower to come and look at this very interesting Virtual Public Expo 2017 Hi, my name is Chris Tan I'm here uh, as a lawyer uh, although I don't look like one, I assure you I'm one okay, for a start um, and this is very happening at the moment uh, and I'm going to share with you in the next 10 minutes so it's called step by step you can buy things, you can buy things under the property for a simple reason that uh, you're protected under the law. Now, why am I saying that is very simple. If your ownership and if your right is not protected, uh, there will not be any motivation for investment, right? Let me bring you back to a time where there is actually uh, no price, no value um, for any property uh, 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 that you need to buy. For all intended purposes, property yield to be free. Can you recall a time and a stage like that? Well, if you just bring you back to the Flintstone, the Stone Age and all that, remember Fred? Yeah, Fred, at well, that time, when they were on the sea, uh, a property he actually don't really have to pay. Just imagine Fred come to a cave. So when the cave come and they say that, hey, I want to use this cave as my house, all you need to say is, this is my cave, correct? So, and then what happened is, uh, he will start to cultivate, build a family and whatnot in that cave, and then until another caveman show up in Fred's cave. So what happened is, cavemen, cavemen meet, first thing they do is to fight over the cave because they like the cave, both at the same time. Alright, the winning cavemen will stay in the cave and the losing cavemen will go elsewhere, uh, elsewhere. So the all, ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the very first law of real estate is when this winning caveman take a stick and start to draw a line outside of his cave and then he said, you cross, you die. Alright, so for all intents and purposes, uh, Real estate is demarcated by law, there's boundary, there's enforcement and there is um, actually protection if you invest. That is why you need to listen to me. Come, let's understand some fundamental about property investment. Well, that's a little bit on part one. Now you look at this, uh, in my next slide, you realise there are two very familiar um, flags that we have. So we have um, United States of America on one side and the other side is actually Malaysia. Do you know what's the similarity between these two? Because you have to understand a little bit of fundamental because before you can invest. Now in Malaysia, we are also like United States. Officially, you can call us United States of Malaysia because for all intents and purposes, it's the same. It's a federation of multiple states uh, that come. Now, why do I need to highlight this in terms of property investment? Is because you have to understand land for all intents and purposes in Malaysia is the state matter. So when I say that, what it effectively means is that the transaction or to facilitate land title transfer or any process for land ownership registration is, administ is administered by the state and not the federal government. So therefore, each state might have their own difference from time to time. So when you say that I bought a property in Kuala Lumpur and I expect that the same transaction to be repeated in Penang, you are right to a certain extent but they might have some uh, variation. Federal government in this context is only regulating the processes. So you're looking using the same form, same process to administer land ownership. Now under Article 13 of our Federal Constitution, um, if you do know that we have this very important basic law in Malaysia, um, it said your right to property. You have the right to buy and own property in Malaysia and it cannot be taken away from you easily without reasonable compensation. That is so entrenched under our constitution. Well, I'm very proud to say to you is that for all intents and purposes, we in Malaysia is the only country in Southeast Asia would have this right being stated clearly in our constitution, right? So in this case, uh, another fundamental is also very important is about the legal system. A lot of time we talk about legal system in Malaysia as if that everything is given, but you have to understand where we model our legal system from. Our legal system is actually modeled upon the Commonwealth colonial master in the past. So therefore, if you can buy in country like UK, Australia, Hong Kong, right, you can buy in Malaysia. So the same principle uh, in terms of uh, property ownership apply. Now, just to get you know why do you need to invest in property, what is the motivation, what is your uh, pertinent legal protection in that sense, um, I can give you aid, especially if you're a foreigner, there's even more keen. 
Number one, you can have direct ownership. For foreigners to buy in Malaysia, you can actually buy the property directly under your name. Number two, uh, we also offer this thing called freehold title. Not every country in the world offer freehold title. What does freehold title mean? Freehold title means that this property is yours forever until you sell it. Correct? And then you can actually assign it to your next generation and the generation after that. Uh, number three, we have a very good uh, legal system. And number four, it's actually on the property ownership right. Uh, it's actually entrenched under our federal constitution and you will not be taken away of your property unless with reasonable uh, uh, compensation. All right. And the other thing is about banking system. One of the things about property investment you must always remember is this keyword. What's this keyword? Leverage. Leverage. It's because if you need to buy property, there's always a financing option available. And you don't need to come up with 100% of the price. All you need to do is come up with the down payment and the bank can take care of the rest. That's the beauty of property investment. And of course, number six, you have to say why Malaysia is because we have a very workable uh, purchase procedure. We don't, com uh, we, don't, we don't proclaim to be one of the most efficient in the land administration and transaction wise, but within a couple of months, we can get the transaction completed. Right. And the other one is that if you're buying residential property, a very strong statutory protection regime under the Housing Development Act to protect the home buyer. And of course, one of the very interesting things why people like to look at property investment as a good asset class in Malaysia is the fact that in Malaysia, we have abolished the concept of inheritance tax. So which means that when you pass your property to your next generation, there is no tax uh, uh, actually levied on the uh, assignment. Now let's look at the process. Actually, the process is quite uh, um, uh, uh, simple and standardized here. We look at the different different steps here. Um, what we look at is a, is a typical situation where you have a principal intent to sell to buy property. Principal in that sense is seller. So the seller would then then engage an agent and negotiator, and then the negotiator or agent will then procure purchaser for that purpose. All right. So in that sense, you also have then the next step. The patient will make an offer to purchase. When though they will then give grant an option to purchase, and then that's where I come in as a lawyer. That's where you start to engage a lawyer. The lawyer negotiate, getting the SPA signed, and make sure that all the conditions are fulfilled. And then agent get the commission paid, and then you start what we traditionally, if you do a subsale market, call a three plus one. Three plus one is the time that you pay your ten percent on the signing of the sales and purchase agreement, and then subsequently within the three months you have to look for the balanced purchase price, either from your own source of fund or even from bank or financial institution. Of course, there are options available to you. Uh, in today's context, you might want to consider EPF withdrawal, things like that. Okay? So, um, very important legal concept during this work cycle would be concept like an offer, acceptance, consideration, um, special term, and very importantly, I think I like to highlight one word, is called time. Time is of the essence. Why is it time is of the essence? You have to understand one thing is that it's all regulated by time. When you sign your agreement, you don't take your own sweet time to go and source for your funding. You should start getting your bank ready and make sure they disperse in time because if you don't observe the timeline, you probably need to be paid uh, what we call the uh, late payment uh, incentive. Another thing that's very key important about your buying process, your purchase process, is a very key concept of knowing the stakeholder. A lot of people say, um, I bought property in Singapore, you know, it probably take me two weeks. And I bought property in Hong Kong, it probably take me two, three days. And then the full transact the transaction is transacted. And how come in Malaysia, we need probably three, four months to settle that? Now, let me address this to you. It's because uh, a lot of people think that, you know, in Malaysia, we had to say that, you know, mana other system in terms of mass, right? And mass. So I'm trying to say, no, we have plenty of system. It's just that the system does not talk to each other. That is why the role of lawyer is very important. If I can show you the next slide, which is a very clear cut uh, showing who is actually a stakeholder for you in terms of uh, completing a, a legal transaction in buying a property. Where you can see that lawyer is actually playing a role of a connector. Right? The lawyer is actually the goal between the guy who fill in the gaps in that sense. Let's look at the various stakeholder here. It's pretty common if you buy a property, especially in the sub-sale market, uh, you were talking about real estate agent, yes, the agent that connect you and introduce and bring you for the site visit. Then you have a seller, obviously, obviously another party called buyer. Alright, then of course you would have developer because the developer is there to make some confirmation. Then of course you have the seller lawyers. And if you're buying a strata property, you have a management office to confirm if there's any outstanding service charge uh, or any sinking fund not done. 
they then you have to deal with the utility company. You have to go and talk to the the the, the electric uh, the the TMB, the Shabas of the world, just to make sure that all these things are not outstanding. You have a buyer lawyer. You have the local authority. Why do you need the local authority? Because the local authority might want to confirm if there's any quick rent assessment being outstanding. Then you need to deal with the stamp office, right? Then you do the seller bank, seller bank lawyer, buyer bank, buyer bank lawyer, land office, and tax authority. If you click a simple count, it's about 16 party altogether. If you give them four days each, that's about three months. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, yes, while everyone aspires to be a property investor, uh, it is crucial that you, as a property investor or property buyer, um, need to know the fundamental of the law. Of course, you don't need to fill in the detail, you don't need to know everything in the transaction, but knowing the basics will allow you to know what are the options available to you. So, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for your focus. I'm very happy to completing the very first 10 minutes of this live sessions that I have. So, stay tuned to this channel. Uh, I don't know, we call it the agedproperty.com channel, right? At VPES 2017. So, I'll see you tomorrow. I think I have another session. Thank you.